Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Fight Your Way Fit. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some advanced sparring tactics and we're gonna learn how to fight like a pressure fighter. What is a pressure fighter? Well, if you Google pressure definition, you're gonna get that pressure is a continuous force exerted against an object or the use of persuasion, influence, or intimidation to make someone do something. And that's exactly what pressure fighters like Joe Frazier, Julio Cesar Chavez, or the definition of a pressure fighter, Roberto Duran do. They apply continuous pressure and they force or influence a fighter to fight in a way that they may not wish to fight. And today I traveled to St. Clet, Quebec to Club de Box Lafreniere, where I will spar 10 rounds with former Canadian and NABO middleweight champion, Francis Lafreniere, as he is in training camp for an upcoming fight and I'll leave a link to his Facebook fan page below. Now, Francis Lafreniere is known as the people's champ because he'll fight anyone, anywhere, and he is never ever in a dull fight. He's a quintessential pressure fighter who takes it right to his opponents. And like many pressure fighters, he's had a couple of controversial losses early in his career with four round fights. But once you start going 10 and 12 rounds, well, this style of pressure fighting can really break down even the most skilled of opponents and Francis has been ranked in the top 15 by the IBF and in the top 10 by the WBO. So he's a world-class pressure fighter and he's also a great guy to help me out with this tutorial video. So it's the end of a training camp for a fight and I've asked him to save me a sparring day so I can do this tutorial for you guys. And we're gonna go all out for 10 rounds but with only 30 second rest in between rounds. So that's only a 30 second break. So that way come fight night, he's gonna have no trouble catching his wind in between rounds with those longer rest periods. Whew. So I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to need it because doing 10 rounds with short breaks with a world-class pressure fighter is going to be really tough. And so, all right, here we go. And as you can see, there's no feeling out process. He starts off fast and furious to dictate the pace and he goes right to work. Francis Lafreniere is a pressure fighter and he has a game plan. And a big part of that game plan is to control the pace and the tempo of the fight. He's making me fight the way that he wants me to. And that's at a pace that is much, much faster than I would normally like. And at my age of 42, I'm happy to throw 30, maybe 40 punches around and he's probably throwing double and some rounds probably triple that number. So his punch output is very, very high. And it's not necessarily that he's gonna be hitting me with that high volume of punches. The game plan is that I'm definitely gonna to have to react to each and every one of those punches. And that is the key. It's not only getting hit, but it's consistently having to move and to react that's going to be really tough. One thing you must note is that pressure fighters actually have a good jab, yet they use it differently. It's not the type of jab like that of an Ali that looks super Super crisp and snaps your head back and scores a bunch of points. But the jab of a pressure fighter is quick and short. It's used to close the distance and to get inside. And once inside, that's where they're going to put in some work. It's an annoying type of jab that is just always in your face, yet it keeps you off balance and continuously gives you something to think about. Once he uses that jab to get into close range, that's where pressure fighters really begin to work. He just keeps that pace so high and he mixes up his punches both to the head and to the body. And again, it's at a consistently high work rate, which is gonna really start to take its toll as the rounds go on. A pressure fighter more often than not immediately takes control of the center of the ring. By doing that, he's ensuring that he's using math in his favor. You see, by staying in the center like Francis is doing, he's using one pivot to angle himself towards me. And to adjust now, I need to use three or four steps to circle at a wider circumference to stay away from him. And all of those extra steps add up over the rounds. And once he has that center of the ring, he continuously cuts the ring off and forces me either against the ropes or into a corner, where now I'm going to have really limited mobility. And he begins once again to really go to work. It's also psychological warfare, as for one, I feel he's imposing his will, and he won't give up the center of the ring easily once he has it. You constantly feel penned in and claustrophobic, as most fighters don't like being trapped or penned up against the ropes or into a corner. There's definitely a method to this madness, and that's gonna become more and more apparent as these rounds wear on. It's not only a high volume of punches that Francis will use to apply pressure, it's also head and shoulder movement and his footwork. It's also the feints. Even though he's not punching, he looks like he's about to punch or he's invading my personal space so I feel uncomfortable. And that's forcing me to move, which I don't really wanna do. And that's the beauty of what he's doing. 
He's mentally forcing me to make all of these extra movements that I shouldn't be making. And that's all going to add up as we head down the road. And that's why pressure fighters may lose some fights early on in their career, the four and six round fights, because it's not so apparent as to what is transpiring. And perhaps their opponent can keep running and pumping out the jab and win some of the early rounds. But you can't run forever. And you extrapolate all that extra movement over 10 to 12 rounds. And many of the fighters that have won a decision over a pressure fight in a four round fight would probably get knocked out if it was a 12 round fight as they would begin to feel the accumulating effects of this pressure fighting style. Once he's in range, he often throws his punches and as soon as he finishes throwing, he falls in forward to smother my return shots. And you're going to see this over and over again. Like right here, he's putting his head right up against my lead shoulder. And no, he's not resting. Trust me, he's not resting at all. He's trapping my lead arm and keeping me squared up so that I can't fight back with any real authority. And right there, he's going to continue to bang away. And now if I were a southpaw, then he would pin me to the other side. This style of boxing is not pretty, as there's a lot happening in close here, but it's oh so effective. And you're going to see this time and time again here, where he gets within range and he throws the shots that he wants to throw. And then again strategically, yes strategically, he falls in to trap my lead arm and smother my shots. You see, he's used to fighting in close range like this, and he's comfortable here with all these little short range shots. It always comes back down to the fact that he's making me fight his fight. He loves to fight in close like this, and he's so experienced at controlling his opponents on the inside. I can't get a chance to breathe, let alone get my balance or throw any meaningful shots. He's just always so close that I can't really throw anything. He's just always right there in my face. He's also leaning on me, keeping me squared up and on my heels. And that's also sapping my energy. And it also makes it very difficult to throw a rear uppercut, which in this situation is the shot that I'd like to throw. But because he's leaning on me, I just can't get the right leverage. He again keeps his head in close over my lead shoulder. He's basically using my own lead shoulder for defense against my own punches. And he's also simultaneously walking me back to the ropes or to the corner. And he's even using his head and shoulder to swing me or steer me where he wants me to go. It's pretty clever. You'll notice that once he uses his jab to get within range, he lets his hands go with combinations. He's throwing two, three, four, five, sometimes even six punches in succession. And he's also not loading up with 100% power with every shot. He varies the intensity. Some are a little bit harder and others are not all that powerful, but I have to react to all of them. Why? Because I can't tell from this close range which ones are going to be light and which ones are going to knock my head off. So it's forcing me again to continuously have to react to all of these punches, which I'm telling you is draining. And talking about draining, he's also really putting in some work to the body. All great pressure fighters have a good body attack. It's part of their overall strategy. They're in it for the long haul as these guys fight at a high pace, yet they're also simultaneously doing everything that they can so that you can't keep that pace up. And maybe not after one or two, but after dozens of body shots, you're not gonna feel all that energetic in the later rounds. And so going to the body early is like putting money into the bank, and it's all going to add up very soon with interest. It's very difficult to box a guy like Francis because he's so skilled at keeping the fight where he wants it. He's able to control the range with his feints, his jab, and his footwork, and he can stay within range because he has really good defense. He's great at blocking punches and he's great at slipping punches in that close range. And again, he's masterful at pinning his head up against my shoulders so that I can't really hit him back in return. So it's very difficult to get him out of there. So once again, these pressure fighters have a skill set that makes you fight their type of boxing match. And you may not be accustomed to fighting like that. Oh, but I promise you that they are. Another attribute of a pro pressure fighter like Francis Lafreniere is that they have great chins and they know that they can take a punch. And so they're not afraid of stepping into range and potentially getting hit. They really do have Grace under fire. Even when I hit him with solid shots, he doesn't react. He doesn't get mad or instantly try to retaliate. He stays composed. So when I hit him, it's no big deal. He just goes right back to work. He doesn't get rattled. He just sticks to the game plan of wearing you down. As the rounds wear on, it's apparent that he's a great pressure fighter, and this sparring session is going exactly how he wants it to go. And here's a great example. When I feel like I'm ready to trade and really throw some hard shots, he senses it, and he disengages. It's like throwing a changeup in baseball. And now I'm chasing him. What? I'm chasing him. Okay, good. And then, all of a sudden, he stops on a dime, and he traps me as I walk right into a combination. And that's because he switches up the cadence. He's usually, but not always, coming forward. So your brain gets used to that. And then all of a sudden, he mixes it up. And he also mixes up the speed of his punches. 
it makes it very difficult to deal with. I'm telling you, most sparring sessions have a certain rhythm. You hit me, I hit you, you hit me, I hit you. But with Francis, it throws you for a loop because the timing is different. It's like, I want to hit you, and then you hit me, and then you hit me, and then you hit me again. And then when I want to go hit you back, you're either smothering my shots up and close, or you're gone. Top professional fighters have a game plan, and the best fighters have the ability to alter that plan if necessary. Or they also have the discipline to stay the course if the plan is working. And so no matter what I do, this guy just doesn't relent. He sticks to the plan. He keeps applying the pressure. In fact, over the past few rounds, he's picking up the pace, and he's trying to get me to run out of gas and die out. And the thing with a pressure fighter is that they're right there in your face. So guess what? You have to react. Because if you're not punching him, which is draining your energy and getting you very tired, well then guess what? He's punching you. So either way, you're getting into deep, deep trouble in these later rounds. Finally, here we are at round 10, and that was with only 30 second breaks. And his game plan is really starting to pan out. My shoulders are extremely tired, and my legs are getting exhausted, and they don't easily want to move. My energy level is sapped, and if this was a video game, you would see my health meter getting completely drained. My punches are now in slow motion, and I'm missing many of them. My hands no longer want to stay up nice and high, and I'm breathing in nothing but hot air. And so yeah, mmm, but there's only one big problem, and that is that he's used to this, and he's not tired. And now he's picking up the pace and trying to close the show. In his 10th round and at such a high pace, he's still able to keep throwing punch after punch and that's because all the small things that he's done he's used his jab he's worked the body he's used feints basically for all the rounds he's kept up a high pace and continued to apply the pressure now all that finally adds up and it breaks down the opponent and now you may be watching and asking well if he's such a good pressure fighter then why am i at 42 not getting knocked out or knocked down well the main reason is that i'm so much heavier i'm 200 pounds and he's a middleweight so that's why trust me if i was lighter i'd be in big trouble but yet at this point I'm still tired and I can definitely tell you that fighting a pressure fighter of this caliber is never fun. No matter what you're not going to look good and even if you do win by decision well it's going to be very tough on you and on your body and you're definitely going to pay a price and trust me you will definitely feel it tomorrow. Once again I just want to thank Francis Lafreniere for helping out with this little tutorial as not many pro fighters allow people to record their sparring sessions and then post them on YouTube. So aside from being the people's champ and a great pressure fighter he's also a great guy. So after these 10 rounds, what makes him a good pressure fighter? Well, first and foremost, he's in phenomenal shape and he can even go 12 rounds at such a high pace. He has a very high punch output and a lot of those punches are thrown from in close. He also has a really good jab and he uses that jab to close the distance. He has both a good chin and good defense. He's also good at cutting off the ring and forcing his opponent into the ropes. He punches in combinations and he puts in a lot of work to the body. But most importantly, pressure fighters are mentally tough and they win a battle of attrition because they know that they have the heart and the stamina to go the distance and they're just relentless. And if you're in there with a pressure fighter, you're definitely going to get those things tested. If you guys like these videos, I'll try and do more of them as different fighters with different fighting styles will enter training camps. And I'll see if I can bug them for some sparring. Till then, this has been Mike Gales for Fight Your Way Fit. And if you like these videos, then please click below to like and subscribe as I'm constantly posting up great tips and new ideas and they're all meant to get you into the absolute greatest shape possible.